you know what, man? I've been watching your YouTube channel. It's that's pretty good. <laughs> Hey, appreciate you, man. Appreciate well, I started. It. I wanted to see because I, I watched. Uh, I watched four of your games last in 2019. So I, I knew mm. about you coming in uh, out of the summer, and I was, you know, disappointed they didn't play. And I'm, heard, I'm sure you heard that a lot. But I wanted to see how your journey was to Mobile, and you only had the one practice, but you you balled out of that one practice. And what was the feedback you got from teams based on that one practice, given the fact that you hadn't even played in 2020, and people thought, okay, maybe Levi's going to be rusty, and you didn't look rusty at all. Yeah, the feedback was uh, – I got a lot of positive feedback from the coaches and, you know, everybody who watched it. Obviously, I think if I would have played, you know, practice two, practice three in the game, you know, I would have been in a better position. But it was good feedback for sure. Now, is there anything the NFL teams that, that, that you talked to that week that they said, okay, Levi, we want you to get better in this area or this, these areas you need to improve? Because you're incredibly quick for your size. You're incredibly strong for your size. You don't look like a quote-unquote defensive tackle. You look like uh, a hopped-up Jadavion Clowney ready to go <laughs> with that type of uh, – that size and, and the way your physique is. Uh, is there anything that they said, okay, here's some things that maybe you should work on? Uh, not any tubby much. More like stuff I already know, like pad level, keeping my pad level down to create a better base. That was kind of the main point. So one of the, uh, I mean, you were a shining star day one, no doubt about it, but another shining star on your team that I wanted to ask you about at the senior bowl was, was Quinn Miners. And I'm guessing you didn't know who Quinn was before you got there. <laughs> not, a, not at all. I didn't know a lot about him. I, I give that guy a lot of respect for going out there with that half shirt on and then, and then yeah. playing and then balling out, but you 100%. had some one-on-ones with him. He's the center from uh, Wisconsin whitewater for people who don't know. He didn't play at all. Uh, either in, in 2020, their season was canceled. He spent a lot of time working out, like carrying logs. I don't know if you saw that video of him, like carrying logs around. Yeah, saw it. You, went up, you went up against him one on one. How was like, what was that experience? Because I'm, you I would imagine coming from a power five school, you see a small school guy, you're not giving a lot of thought. He's at the senior bowl, so you know he earned that right. But mm -hmm. before you went up against him one on one and afterwards, what were your thoughts about him? Because he seems like a guy who also made himself some money that week. Mm -hmm. Well, before, I mean, you know, Coach Pete and everybody in my school teaches us to not think of guys like that. You know, he was there for a reason, so we knew he was going to be a baller in some sort of fashion. But uh, for me, I was surprised by his quickness. He's a quick, fast center. He kind of reminds me of uh, our center, Nick Harris, who's quick, fast, and strong. So he's kind of that, that kind of build. Yeah, he was he was fun, man. And he, yeah. I was I was I was sorry he didn't get a chance to play. I think he had, a, had an injury as well. So in 2019, I mean, you had a lot, a lot of really good games and you put a lot of good stuff on tape. Uh, they had you playing in, in Washington. Sometimes you played zero, sometimes you had three. Um, where are you most comfortable? Could you even kick out the five if you needed to? Like, wh where do you, where is the best area for Levi to start, like to dominate off the snap? Yeah, generally I can play anywhere. I can play the zero, the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five. So uh, the best seven, seven and nine. Fuck it, might as well. <laughs> But yeah, I could I can pretty much play everywhere on the line. Where I'm most comfortable, based on the season, either the zero or the three. Yeah, either I mean, fine for me. you gave centers a lot of trouble. You gave guys a lot of trouble in in, in the A and the B gap as well. I want to ask you about that 2019 season about some quarterbacks you faced because I mean everyone yeah. knew Justin Herbert last year, the year before, they knew who Justin Herbert was, but not a lot of people knew about Zach Wilson. And you guys faced BYU the last two years, 2018, 2019, and you beat him. Do you have any memories of Zach Wilson 2019 version? Because he had a decent year. He wasn't the guy he was in 2020. But mm -hmm. going in, like, did you guys game plan against his ability to move and to throw and all that, or he was just a, a guy you were facing? Uh, respectfully, I think he was just a guy we were facing. No, I, I understand mean, that. But, I mean, he, yeah. look, he made a huge leap in 2020. He did. He yeah, did. absolutely. For sure. But, uh, I mean, he was doing good in 2019 because yeah. I'm pretty sure they were undefeated before we played them. But we had already played BYU, I think, either the year before that or – Yeah, 2018 year. you played him. And beat we did. Him. Beat okay, him yeah. Good. Yeah. So, in our heads, it was kind of like we're just going to beat him again. You know what I'm saying? So, yep. it didn't matter if they were undefeated or whatnot. I don't think anybody was really paying attention to who their quarterback yeah. was. So no, that's right. That. And yeah. now, look, man, to his credit, people are paying attention to who the quarterback 100%, is. 100%, as they he, should. He balled out. So uh, another quarterback, I don't, I don't know if you have any thoughts on him, but he's a guy that people are talking about in the media, and you talk to NFL folks, they're talking about him. Davis Mills, the quarterback out of Stanford. He's, mm -hmm. a, he's a big kid. He's 6'4". He has a pretty good arm. I mean, he's not, you know, he ain't Lamar Jackson in terms of running, but, <laughs> but he makes plays. Were, were there any sort of game plan concerns about how he could hurt you down the field? Uh. 
No, nah, not not much for him because he stands in the pocket. Yeah. So it's kind of you know contain and get get a sack. He's not a. I don't think we categorized him as a runner or anything like that. So it was, you know it was our normal stand in the pocket and pass quarterback. Now I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you know who Justin Herbert was when you guys faced yeah. off in 2019 because oh, yeah. he does. Are you surprised at the year he had? Because he look. I love Justin Herbert, and I apologize every time I bring his name up because I didn't think he was going to be this good this quickly. <laughs> were, are you, were you shocked at how quickly he was able to turn it on? I wasn't shocked. I think that's a, that's a cool and collective dude. I think he sits in pockets calm. He shuffles to the side. He's, he's elusive in the pocket. I thought he was, he's going to be good. He's just a cool and collective dude. I think that cool, collective, and confidence is, is going to make you successful in the league. So, so I wasn't I- surprised. So I, I, I ask guys this when I talk to them because, you know, I'm, I do the draft stuff for CBS and, of course, I have to do mock drafts. And I spend a lot of time getting yelled at by, by fans. Do you peek at mock drafts? Is that something that you do? Do I peek at mock drafts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I peek at them every once in a while. I mean, it's hard not to. Guys, guys tag you in them on Twitter. Guys tag you in them on Instagram. So you're not going to, like, not look at it. So, yeah, I look at it. But at the same time, it's like none of them – are the truth the only the That's only right. truth is the first five guys then everything else is, <laughs> is just bullshit. <laughs> well, look man that's great advice i i like your game a lot and you're one of my favorite players in this draft class so uh again that doesn't mean much because i'm not drafting people but but I've, <laughs> I've been impressed with what you've been able to do i want to ask you about a couple of your teammates uh you talked a lot with with keith taylor at the combine uh, i mean excuse me the, at the senior bowl you guys seem close he had a great week uh, he's a long corner. He's long arms, long legs. But what about uh, his guy in the secondary and your teammate, Elijah Molden? He's a more of a slot guy. He plays like a dog. What, what are your thoughts on, on him? He's the smartest kid on the field, smartest man on the field, and he can translate that easily to the field. So he's a he's a baller in, the, in his head, and then physically he's a baller. I think the dude's just ridiculous. He's like he's like a Tyron Matthews, but more technical, in my in my opinion. I, and that's a great comparison. And, and I was really impressed. And one of the things that people sort of in the media anyway, get lost on is, well, he's not as tall as Keith Taylor or he's, he's smaller in size, but he, he doesn't play like he's five eleven or whatever he's listed at. And um, what about your, your line mate, Joe Tryon, who also opted mm-hmm. out in 2020, I think. And, and he, again, he's another guy that is built like six, five, two sixty, I think is what, what he's listed at. I'm not sure his exact numbers are, but he plays exactly how he looks like he is strong at the point of attack. He can, he can set the edge. He can get after it. He just hasn't played a lot of football. So what are your thoughts yeah. on, on Joe? I mean, he can do, he can do everything he needed to do. Joe's a beast. I don't know if you've seen him now. Swole uh-uh. as shit. He's, he, he, <laughs> he's huge now. He's really grown into his body. He was already big before, but he's really grown into his body. Has a lot of Ben crazy arsenal of pass rush movie. He's going to be great. I think he's going to be a, obviously he didn't play as much, so he could be a sleeper, but I think as soon as he gets into the league, he's going to be an instant impact. I, I feel like he is a guy that if he snuck into the bottom of round one, much like you, if either one of you guys <laughs> win the first round, it would not surprise me at all. And, and I can't envision a situation where you guys are hanging around in the middle of round two without having knowing what, what your future holds. Cause you got, and Elijah molded too, for that matter, like that Washington yeah. team was sneaky good for people in the East coast who didn't spend a lot of time watching, uh, you know, pac 12 football. Uh, so l- let me ask you, let me ask you this. And you sort of talked about this in, in your video uh, covering the senior bowl. Um, what is your go-to pass rush move? And one of the, like, what, what's the secondary thing that you go to if you get stymied, uh, if the initial move doesn't work? Yeah. So my go-to is a bull pool. Yeah. So I'll get my hands on you. You got, you, know? you got Quinn on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I got that one. And then I think my counter, if I got stuck on a bull pool, first you you just go to power, you go straight to power, you push the pocket. But uh, sometimes I counter with a spin. Sometimes I do just an arm over to get out of it. So it's, it's multiple things. The pass rush is usually about your first step is a plan, and then your second step is a reaction. Uh, Levi, let me ask you one more question. I'll let you go. And I appreciate your time because I know you're busy. and No problem. You, you ain't making any money talking to me, so I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> so um, – and this is something that when you talk to agents, you, you, you say you hear that this may happen more often. So you opted out and I would imagine you spent a lot of that time getting ready for this moment here and the moments that are going to come mm-hmm. in the coming months. Do you feel like you're, like I said, you weren't rusty at all day one of the senior bowl. Do you feel like this was a good path for you in terms of staying in shape and even getting stronger and better? Or do you wish you were, ha- had been able to play five or six or 12 football games? I mean, 
obviously I wish I would have played and been with my boys, but I think this was for sure the better choice for preparing me for the next level. Not even preparing me for the combine or the pro day. I'll do good there, but like preparing me for the NFL to be able to go into it and be an impact as a rookie, I think this is this was the best option. Awesome. Uh, Levi, uh, Levi Owens Arike. I think I got that yeah. right. Owens yes, Arike. There it is. I appreciate your time. Best of luck to you, and, and thanks for spending some time with us. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man.